On behalf of Vancouver Community College and on behalf of all of you, I'd like you to welcome, please, John B. Harrington. Wow, well, thank you very much. Now, it's a pleasure to, to be back in Vancouver. This is fabulous. Uh, when I was eight years old, I used to sit in a cardboard box and dream I was going to the moon. When I was growing up, my heroes were the ones that were flying in space because you saw it on TV every day. And so um, you know, I dreamed about it, but I never thought I could accomplish it. So this story is really about that process and, and what it took to get uh, to that point in my life. The year that I started college, I learned how to rock climb, and I spent all my time rock climbing and little of my time studying. When you don't study, you don't pass tests, you don't pass tests, you don't stay in school. I earned a 1.72 grade point average as a freshman in college. And it wasn't, I like to think because I wasn't intelligent, I wasn't motivated. I didn't have a desire to be in class, but I did have a desire to rock climb. And the year that I took off, um, I went to work for a surveying company in Colorado as a rock climber. And I was getting paid $4 an hour to do it. I was living in the mountains, I was 19 years old. I was just, this was, life was good. Um, but I worked for a guy that it was an engineer that convinced me that if I want to make something of myself and I want to be successful in life, I need to go back to college. And so I, I re-entered the school, the same one that kicked me out, uh, with the idea, now I'm going to study engineering. I'm going to study math because I understand the practicality of what that is. I, I got a degree in applied mathematics. I went to uh, the Navy in the fall of 19, in 1983. Spent 22 years in the Navy flying airplanes. Well, as a test pilot, I realized that a lot of the graduates that I had admired as a kid back in the 1960s had been Navy test pilots too. And so these people had become NASA astronauts, and I was doing the exact same thing in my career that they had done in their career. So why was I, why was I any different? Why could I not apply to become an astronaut? Well, if you don't apply, you won't become an astronaut. If you do apply, you might. And so I applied twice. I applied in 94. I was interviewed in 1996 and selected to the 16th group of astronauts. Uh, and when I came to NASA, they said, you're, you know, you're the first Native American astronaut or Aboriginal astronaut. I had no idea. Uh, but it put me in a position where I could share my story with kids that, that had, did not have a role model or did not think they could accomplish something like this. And so I'm very proud of being able to do that. And I love sharing that story. After about six, uh, six years in the office and working really hard, I got my chance to fly in space. Uh, the remarkable thing about flying in space is a human endeavor. And when you know people on board, it's that much more moving. It's a phenomenal engineering achievement, but we're, we're doing it with people. And that is an absolutely moving experience. The first thing I did in space was I let go of my book. Uh, I had it on a tether, and I let go of my book, and for the first time in my life, this thing hovered right in front of my face. And then you realize when you take your seatbelt off that you have to hang on to something, because all of your life you're used to standing on something or sitting on something, and now for the first time in your life you're floating. We were in space for about two weeks, uh, landed. I felt like somebody had, had taken a sack of potatoes and dropped them on my head. When I came home, I couldn't stand up. I was very nauseous. I was thrown up. I couldn't walk for about an hour. Uh, had no idea I'd feel that way. Uh, very sensitized to being in space, hated coming back. I was offered an opportunity to be a test pilot for a little company called Rocket Plane, and they were going to compete with a company to fly paying passengers in space. And they said, hey, do you want to be our test pilot? Would you come back to Oklahoma, where they were based, and be our test pilot, help build this vehicle. And I thought, if I don't do this and it's successful, will I regret having the opportunity to try? And the answer to that was yes. And so I made a really, really tough decision to leave NASA. And for about two years, I worked on this project. And it was great fun, super engineers. We didn't have the money. And unfortunately, it didn't pan out. I found myself out of a job, retired in the Navy, uh, a trained engineer, pilot, without a job in my 40s, late 40s. And fortunately, my tribe is very, my, the governor of my tribe is very into mathematics, very into science, loves to support education. So I said, Governor, I want to pedal a bicycle from Cape Flattery, Washington to Cape Canaveral, Florida, and I'm going to speak at Indian reservations and NASA schools all across the country. And every day I'm going to write a story, and in that story is going to be a math or science problem to talk about the practicality of math. The most satisfying things you do in life are usually the most challenging things you do in life. And you want to be successful in all of them. But when you are successful about it, the feeling is phenomenal. Figure out what it is you're passionate about and go in that direction because you never know where you're going to end up. 